<laughs> Welcome to the Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Uh... As I said, it is Friday. Everybody uh, got big plans for the weekend? I tell you what, uh, down in D.C., all the heavy hitters are in Washington, D.C., gearing up for the annual White House Correspondents' Dinner tomorrow night. This year's host is Michelle Wolf, and I know she's going to do a great job. She's hilarious. <laughs> Michelle, I can tell you from personal experience, you're in for a treat. Such a giving crowd. <laughs> They're just ready to have fun. Of course, breaking with tradition yet again, President Trump will not be there. And that might be a good thing. Remember what James Comey said about the president. I never saw President Trump laugh, even in an almost hour and a half long private dinner. He didn't laugh once at the comedy stylings of James Comey? <laughs> the guy is a cut up. You gotta check out his comedy album, James Comey, I Take Extensive Notes. Delirious. <laughs> now, instead, he's not gonna be there. Not gonna be there. Instead of staying in Washington, D.C., Trump will hold a campaign rally in Washington, Michigan. <laughs> did you see what he did there? He picked Washington, Michigan because they couldn't get a venue in their first choice, Moscow, Idaho. <laughs> I believe they also considered intercourse Pennsylvania and going to jail, Ohio. <laughs> Speaking of which, it's been six months since the Me Too movement began exposing predatory behavior of powerful men. And a number of people believe it's time to forgive and forget. Those people, the men. <laughs> Both Matt Lauer and Mario Batali said they are plotting their comebacks. And Garrison Keillor is already on the road performing, even though he lost his public radio gig after a 12-page letter alleging abuses like emails and written messages, requests for sexual contact, and explicit descriptions of sexual communications and touching. Here in Lake Wobegon, folks like to say that doing it bareback is hotter than bebop a rhubarb rhubarb pie. <laughs> Especially if you work the old beanbag. <laughs> but that was a little Bing Crosby. I was... I was I'm sure Bing had some skeletons in his closet, too. But the most unbelievable Me Too rumor swirling out there is Charlie Rose is pitching a talk show in which he would interview high-profile men enveloped in Me Too scandals. I believe the working title is To Catch Up With a Predator. <laughs> I just don't see why anyone would give a show to sexual harassers so they can interview other sexual harassers. We don't give criminal shows where they interview each other. This week on Arson Talk, fires, we love them. <laughs> Roscoe, how do the flames talk to you? <laughs> now, the show's existence has not yet been confirmed, and there does not appear to be any network, streaming platform, or producer <laughs> officially attached to the product. Oh, no producer. Have they called Harvey Weinstein? I hear he's got some free time. <laughs> really good. Really good. Oh, they go come out. Very talented. Very, very talented. He ain't got nothing to do. Meanwhile, and I know you've been waiting for me to get to this story, there's big news in the world of Mexican food. <laughs> A man was sentenced to prison this week for stealing $1.2 million <laughs> in fajitas. What was he thinking? <laughs> he could have gotten that many fajitas for $7 at Taco Bell. <laughs> and fajitas are not easy to steal. I believe we have received... we have this? We have an audio recording of the crime. Ow! Ow! Hot! 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 Of course, the thief, Gilberto Escamilla, didn't get away with that much fajita in one day. He took his loot slowly over nine years. <laughs> yeah. Here's how he worked it, okay? Escamilla began intercepting fajitas that he ordered through the Cameron County Juvenile Center where he worked and delivering them to his own customers. So you know those were quality fajitas. <laughs> you can tell by their slogan, taste so good, you'll think you're in jail. <laughs> but the crime spree came to an end in August when a delivery truck carrying 800 pounds of fajitas arrived at the detention center. The driver called the kitchen to ask where he should unload the fajitas. And the woman who answered the phone told the driver that the center did not serve fajitas. <laughs> Confused, the driver told her he had been delivering fajitas there for nine years. <laughs> that is... 
That's got to be a shock. That's got to be a bit of a shock. It's a rude awakening is what it is. I mean, you spend your life thinking you're doing honest work delivering Tex-Mex to a imprisoned children. Then you find out the whole damn thing's a scam. I believe we have footage of the truck driver realizing what happened. Escamilla. It's a classic scene. Holds up. The movie holds up. Escamilla was off work that day, but he was arrested after authorities checked vendor invoices and obtained a search warrant that uncovered county-funded fajitas in his refrigerator. Oh, that's a rookie mistake. You never get high on your own supply. <laughs> Reports are the officers really grilled him along with onions and peppers. It's all detailed in the new CBS drama, CSI Guacamole. 